I don't know if I ever really decided to become a physicist. Um, I was always very interested in physics um, when I was younger and I was particularly interested in particle physics. And one of the first things I remember about that is that I had the Smarties Big Book of Facts when I was like seven or eight. Um, and one of the facts in there was about what everything was made of and it said everything's made of atoms but atoms are made of protons and neutrons and electrons. Um, and I actually embarrassingly brought that up to my teacher um, in school when she told us that the smallest things were atoms. I was that kid who was like, um, no, I actually read a book and it's not that. Being a woman in physics is quite challenging. All through, I guess what you could call my career, but really school and university, um, quite often I was the only woman in my class or in my experiment. Um, and that can be challenging, it can be difficult. Um, another thing that's challenging is uh, something that I started talking about a lot recently with people called imposter syndrome, which is where you get this feeling that um, I'm not clever enough to be doing this. You know, I shouldn't be here being a physicist. At some point, they're going to realise that I don't know what I'm doing. And they're going to realise they hired the wrong person. Um, and that I've just learned that you just have to stop thinking like that. Everyone feels like that in pretty much every area of life. Um, and you just have to realise that that's not true. I really love um, talking to people. Um, both, I love giving scientific presentations. Um, you know, it's really a thrill if you get to go to a conference and give a presentation on a new result that, you know, it's kind of a magical moment that no one knew this thing, even if it's a small thing. Um, but I worked on it and I find, found it out and I can come here and tell you about it. That's really exciting.